Hi there. Up until now, we have learned the three basic languages. Now I am going to implement another project using the CFC language, which is an abbreviation of Continuous Function Chart. First, I will test the final project. After that, I will explain the sorting station, which is a predefined system inside Factory I.O. And then I will start the programming steps using the CFC language. Well, let's start the video by testing the final project. As you can see, here is a control box. The selector has two modes and it can be used to select either the manual or the automatic mode. When the manual mode is selected, the start push button can be used to run the entry conveyor. My manual program can be easily extended to control other pieces of equipment. Now let's select the automatic mode and press the start push button to start the sorting process. The most effective equipment in this project is this vision sensor. It sends a number from 1 to 6 to my controller based on the color and shape of these products. If I press the stop push button, the first conveyor is going to stop immediately and the second one, the one after the vision sensor, remains on for about 15 seconds to move the last product completely. Let's start the sorting process. The stop push button stops the whole process after 15 seconds, but the emergency button can be used to turn off all devices immediately. After resolving the emergency conditions, all items on the second conveyor must be removed manually. After that, the operator may want to reset these numbers which show how many products of each category are moved. Now let's disable the emergency button and restart the sorting station. Let's start designing the system inside factory I.O. I am going to use a predefined project whose name is Sorting Station. Let's explain some of the equipment. As you can see, the Sorting Station uses three pivot arm sorters. Each arm has two actuators. Let's activate them. Also, there are two other conveyors to move products. Let's activate them as well. As I mentioned earlier, this vision sensor is the most important device in this project. When there is not any product below the sensor, it sends a zero to my controller. Otherwise, it sends a number from 1 to 6 based on the color and the shape of the any product. Pay attention to the numbers which I am going to use to categorize the products into three groups that is based on their shapes. Note that I will use this sensor to detect any time a product is moved completely. Note that each push button sensor or actuator has a specific name that I can modify it. Let's use the default name. Here we can see the name of all sensors and push buttons and on the other side 
we can see the name of actuators such as conveyors and sorting arms. Now let's launch code sys to start the programming. Let's create a new standard project. This is my virtual controller and let's select the CFC language to program for the first time. Remember, during the previous project, I explained and used a global variable list. Let's create a global variable list. I am going to use it to define variables to connect the equipment inside the factory I.O. Let's define the variables that I am going to connect them to sensors, push buttons, and so on. Note that I can also right click and select the add variable to open this window and define the variables. Now I need to define the variables which I am going to use them to control the actuators such as conveyors, sorting arms, and so on. All right, I define the variables that I am going to share them with the factory I.O. The sorting station has two modes of operation, manual and automatic. Let's create two program organization units corresponding to each mode. Right now, I have three program organization units. My controller starts its work from this one, which it is empty. First, let's write a simple program to use the selector to call the manual program organization unit. Now let's write a simple program inside the manual POU to test devices individually. Let's write a program just to control the fresh conveyor with the start push button. The program can be extended to control other devices manually as well. Okay, I can use this simple program to control the other devices manually as well. Let's skip it 
and write a program related to the automatic mode. First, the auto POU should be called from the main POU. Now if the automatic mode is selected, this POU with the name of auto is going to be executed. First, let me define a new variable that its name is running mode. Its state is going to be changed by either the emergency stop or start push buttons. If it is equal to true or 1, it means the sorting station is in a running mode. Otherwise, it should be stopped. Because this variable determines an important state and may be used by other program organization units, let me change its scope to the global variable. Also, instead of using the FIO list, let's define it inside a new global variable list. Now I am going to add an RS instruction. Now I want to use the start, stop or emergency buttons to set and reset the running mode variable. Remember, I defined them inside the FIO list as three global variables. The stop and emergency buttons are normally closed, so let's invert their states. Also, both of them can reset the running mode variable. So I use an OR instruction between these two inputs and the RS instruction. Alright, this simple program uses the start push button to activate the running mode variable and it uses the stop and emergency buttons to reset it. As you can see, a program in the CFC language is similar to the FPD language but it does not have any network to arrange instructions. For example, I can use the RS instruction here or here. Note that if the program is written in CFC language, the order of the program execution is determined by these green numbers. Right now, first the current program implements the OR logic between the stop and the emergency buttons. It then determines the output of the RS instruction based on its inputs and finally it updates the running mode variable. I wrote this program to determine the state of the running mode variable according to the start, stop and emergency buttons. 
It determines whether the sorting station is in running mode or not. Now I am going to write a program to determine when the entry conveyor is supposed to be started or stopped. Similarly, I need to use an output coil and an RS instruction. Well, all conditions that can turn on the entry conveyor should be connected to the set pin of the second RS. For mine, there are two conditions. So let's add an OR instruction before the second RS. Well, the first condition is when the start push button is pressed. The second condition is when the sorting station is in running mode and the product has been moved completely. So let's add the running mode variable and the at exit sensor to the program. Note that these two inputs should be enabled to start the entry conveyor. So I need to implement an AND logic between them and then use its result to start the entry conveyor automatically. As I mentioned earlier, the CFC language is similar to function block diagrams, but in the CFC language, we don't need to repeat the inputs inside each network, meaning I can easily get a branch of any input and connect it to the inputs of the other instructions. Also, we can use the instructions everywhere. In the CFC language, these numbers determine the order of an execution. I can easily right click on each instruction and change its order. For example, I can use send to front option to determine any instruction that is supposed to be at the beginning of each scan cycle. Similarly, the second option send to back can be used to determine which instruction is supposed to be executed as the last instruction. Usually I prefer to use the order by data flow option. It usually makes the PLC to execute the program from the top and left side to the right and bottom. Okay, let's continue the programming steps. There are two conditions to reset the entry conveyor automatically and I need to perform an OR logic between them. The first condition is when the sorting station is not in running mode. So let's connect the first pin of the inserted OR logic to the running mode variable and of course I need to invert its state. The second condition is when the product has been passed from the vision sensor onto the second conveyor. This moment can be detected by the vision sensor. I need to compare its value with zero and then use an R trick instruction to produce a pulse to stop the entry conveyor.
Okay, let's compile the program to ensure there isn't any error. Now let's write a program to control the exit conveyor automatically. Similarly, I am going to use a RS instruction and some logic gates to determine all conditions that can start and stop the exit conveyor. Now I am going to determine the condition that can turn on the exit conveyor. Naturally, the running mood variable should be enabled. After this condition, if the vision sensor detects a new product below itself, the PLC is supposed to turn on the exit conveyor. Briefly, if the vision sensor is not equal to zero, it means a new product is below the vision sensor and it needs to be moved by the exit conveyor. Note that inputs can be repeated in the CFC language if there aren't lots of branches that make the program to look complex. For example, instead of these two branches, let's repeat these two inputs. Well, another way to decrease the branches is using connection marks. I can right click on each line and use this option, connection mark. Now this mark, RM, indicates these pins are connected to the running mode variable. Now I need to specify the conditions that they turn off the exit conveyor. Note that after pressing the stop push button, the exit conveyor remains on for 15 seconds. Therefore, I need an off delay timer. All right, when the running mode is disabled, after 15 seconds, this instruction is going to produce a pause that can turn off the exit conveyor. Note that there are two more conditions, so let me add an OR logic. Note that the emergency button must turn off the exit conveyor immediately, not after 15 seconds. So let's connect that to the first pin of the OR logic directly to turn off the exit conveyor. OK, let's sort the program a little. Now let's add another pin to the last OR operand to serve another condition to stop the exit conveyor. 
When this sensor detects a product, it means the exit conveyor has moved the product completely and it is supposed to be stopped until it receives the next one. Note that the state of the sensor is equal to 1 in normal conditions. So I need to invert its state one time, not twice. So I needed to delete the second one. I figured out this problem after testing the project. Now let's extend the program. I want to use the stop push button light to indicate the sorting station is in running mode. In other words, the running mode variable is enabled. I will use a function whose name is blink to create a blinking light. Well, this red line says this function is not defined. I need to click on Library Manager and add the Blink function. Alright, the blink function is added to my program successfully. It produces pulses and it, it can be used to create a blinking light. Now I can connect the output of the blink function to the stop push buttons light to use it as a blinking light. After testing the project, I found a small problem in the performance of the stop push buttons light when the system exited from the running mode. To resolve it, let's perform an AND logic between the producing pulses by the blink function and the running mode variable. Alright, this part of my program just creates a blinking light when the running mode variable is enabled. Try to analyze that. That's simple. Another important section in this project is related to these three arms. Let's create a new POU to write a program for them. Note that I can use another language for the new POU. For example, let's select a structured text language. All right, let's write a program to control the three arms. Note that every time I press the F2 key, this window appears. Inside this window, I can find any variable, function, or instruction to add it to my program. Let's define the running mode variable again. Note that it's a local variable inside the current POU and its full name is different from the previous one which I defined it as a global variable inside the GVL list.
Also, I need an off delay timer to keep the three arms on for 15 seconds when the running mode variable is disabled. Now I am going to write a program related to the first arm. If the system is in the running mode or the off delay timer is still on and the vision sensor has detected these two products, then the controller should turn on the two actuators of the fresh arm. Now I am going to determine the conditions that can turn off the fresh arm. If 15 seconds has been elapsed after pressing the stop push button or if the emergency button is pressed or if another product type has been detected by the vision sensor, the first arm should be turned off. Note that all conditions that can turn on or off an output should be considered. Some of them are simple and obvious, like pressing the emergency button, but some of them may be detected during the simulation step. For example, I tested my program and I realized to add this part to my program. Well, all conditions that can turn on and off the first sorting arm have been served. The other arms work similarly. Therefore, let me copy and paste this part of my program twice and then modify their variables. Alright, the current POU related to the sorting arms should be called beside the auto POU when the automatic mode is selected. Now let's create a new POU to use these three digital LED displays to show the number of moved products. I am going to select the FPD language to write its program. First, I need an up counter. The first counter should be increased when the vision sensor detects these two products. Now let's use the reset push button to reset the counter value. Ok, I forgot to define the reset variable inside the FIO list. Let's go ahead and define it right now. Ok, the other two counters work similarly. So I can copy and paste the first network twice and then correct the variables.
All right, this program should be called the same as these three program organization units. Note that the three counters should always work. So its POU does not need any special condition to start it. Now let me show you another way to execute a POU directly. Note that the controller starts its work from this POU. Now I want to add another POU. Now here are two program organization units that will be executed by the controller directly. Others will be called by the first POU. Note that if I click here, I can change some settings such as the order of execution between these two POUs or change its type or activate the watchdog ability which checks the scan cycle time. Alright, the programming is done. Now I need to select variables that need to be shared with factory IO. Remember that I defined all of them as global variables inside the FIO list. Now let me compile my project to ensure there isn't any error and then add a symbol configuration. All right, let's select all variables of the FIO list. Well, this message says three variables were not used in the program. That's true. In my program, I have not used reset light, start light, and also the stop blade variable. Now I need to make a connection between these variables and the equipment inside the factory I.O via an OPC server. The connection process has been explained several times during the previous videos, so let's skip it. In the next video, I am going to start another project to learn the SFC language. Thanks for watching this video. I see you in the next one.